Guys, Josh from Airspeed Adventures. I'm gonna do a quick video for you to talk to you about some air conditioning uh, problems and solutions. So I'm not gonna go all the way in here, but if you were to go underneath the sink here and clean out all of this junk here and remove the two floor panels, there are three air conditioning compressors underneath here that operate on a split system. These three air conditioning co um, compressors power just the salon of this boat. They are controlled by these two air conditioning and uh, reverse cycle heat pump controllers. The third one is over here on the nav station. The real problem here is that they are a split system, which means the compressors are um, sending the the refrigerant to the air handlers which have fans which move the air through the ducts and ultimately through the vents into the uh, into the cap. Okay there's one air handler underneath this settee, one air handler under that settee, and then one air handler underneath the wet locker over here. Just think of what a waste of space that is but to make matters worse there is a bigger problem with this particular triad of air conditioners. So these three air conditioners are cooled by a seawater intake that comes in uh, through a one inch through hull, basically underneath my, under here. I'll show you the AC pump. It's a thousand gallon an hour March pump. You can see that right in there. Now that discharge right there is sending water at a higher pressure because it's a smaller discharge and it is a uh, intake. And it's sending it along the floor through all sorts of contortions underneath here to a manifold that splits it off into, well, you might say three different uh, cooling, uh, cooling diversions. No it splits it off into four. And why the fourth? Well, there's an air conditioner in the aft cabin or that cools both of the aft cabins. So this here is the port aft cabin here. And on the other side here is the starboard aft cabin over here. And in the lazarette on the starboard side, which is essentially on the other side of that wall right there, there is a fairly brand new all-in-one air conditioner that's not a split system. The trouble, unfortunately, with that is that there was not enough water getting to that air conditioner and it was shutting off and basically overheating. And let's just dive into a little bit of the um, reason why it was not getting enough water. The reason is because the supply to the three salon air conditioners was a larger diameter hose and the one going to the aft cabin was smaller. So water under pressure, really any liquid under pressure is going to want to follow the path of least resistance path of least resistance obviously is going to be the uh, the channel that allows uh, the most water to flow um, the least resistance and so all the other air conditioners were getting plenty of cooling water but this guy here wasn't getting virtually anything so what I did is I went to the la uh, port lazarette and when I had the boat hauled out I replaced this through hull that you can see down here, I replaced it with a through hull that I had intended to use for the um, for the cooling water. I was going to mount the air conditioning uh, uh, strainer, raw seawater strainer, and pump to create its own loop, and I was going to do it basically on this bulkhead right here, right behind that fender, and everything was supposed to be hunky dory, right? Well, it wasn't hunky-dory, and the reason it wasn't was because toward the uh, aftmost portion of the boat, it begins to taper out of the water. And although you... that most of the boat is still in the water, there is not nearly as much volume 
of water um, pushing the boat out of the water. So I was unable to develop enough head pressure to even fill the sea strainer. So I was faced with a situation, a choice that I had to make. Do I leave it there and have to prime that pump every single time I want to run air conditioning? That didn't seem like a sustainable option. Option two was to plumb in a fresh water supply under pressure that would kind of auto prime for me. I didn't like that. It's just so hacky. I just did not like it at all. And the third option was to install a 12 volt pump to essentially auto prime from the ocean. And um, I didn't like that option either. So that left me with one final option, which was to do it right and find the location on the boat that was best suited to install the raw seawater strainer and another air conditioning pump and then run the hose all the way from that location back to the air conditioner. And I also need the power, the power um, that runs to the air conditioner's pump relay panel, which activates the pump when the air conditioner is turned on. And, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, I had the perfect place to install the pump. So let's go back down and take a look. And oh, I'm going to show you the opposite side of the boat before I show you what I actually did. So on the port side, there is a through hull underneath here sorry for this vlog style video here but it's easy to do this and not really have to edit much so there's a new through hole here and all of this gear here that pump right there that uh, pump guard strainer all that stuff is um, left over from when the boat was built it was built with uh, seawater flush um, heads, but before it was even delivered, the boat was delivered with uh, fresh water. So these are, all the hardware was left in place, but it, it's never really been active. So this supplies seawater to the water maker, and then underneath here is where all the water maker hardware is. Actually the, the uh, uh, low pressure pump, the seawater strainer, and uh, some other stuff. So that's on the starboard port side of the boat, rather. So on the starboard side of the boat, I had the same thing, but it was totally unused. The trouble being that I didn't really know how on earth I was gonna get another hose all the way back underneath that bed, behind that uh, bulkhead into the lazarette, you know, avoid the steering gear, avoid the uh, autopilot, avoid all the stuff that's important that I can't hit and still find a way to get it in there without driving myself crazy and wanting to slip my own wrists longitudinally. So I'll show you what I did. Ta-da! That is the finished product right there. And it came out really, really good. I'm really happy with it. And essentially what it is, a piece of starboard mounted vertically. We've got the seawater strainer right there. So out of the through hull, we supply the seawater strainer. From the seawater strainer, it goes to the pump um, intake. This is a magnetic drive, um, fully encapsulated sealed pump. It's made by Seaflow. It's 500 gallons per hour, and it's more than adequate to handle this little baby air conditioner. In fact, it's going to keep the air conditioner so cool that it's going to run so efficiently that it should freeze this cabin out. And that's exactly what happened when I uh, changed the cooling apparatus in the forward air conditioning system, which I will show you when I'm done with this. So we have uh, uh, just a uh, valve here which allows us to prime the pump if necessary. It's rarely necessary to prime these except when you've been sailing on um, one tack for a long period of time and the water has drained out. You sometimes get a bit of an airlock and when that happens you do need to prime. 
not a big deal. Very easy to do. You just crank open that valve, let a little water in. You can catch it in a cup or just let it drip into the bilge. And then the discharge here is that black heavy duty um, water uh, hose. It's actually uh, designed for fresh water systems or air conditioning systems. And then the orange ho uh, line is the power cable. So this is where the seawater, um, the seawater flush water would come from the seawater pump through underneath this little channel here, underneath the shower, which I'll show you. Boom. Underneath the shower, this is kind of our storage closet here. So sorry about that. And then it would go into this, um, into this cabinet here, up underneath, and into, um, into the anti-siphon um, valve, which allows water to be discharged into the toilet, fresh water, in this case, seawater. So what I did is I removed all that junk, and then I ran it all up through underneath here, and there was a chaseway. Um, essentially underneath this whole apparatus, underneath the bed, and it ended up exactly where I wanted it. So it wasn't, uh, it wasn't necessarily hard. It wasn't really easy. It was a pain and I wouldn't want to do it again, but I did it. I know the air conditioning system on this boat probably better than anybody. And, um, I wish that I didn't. I wish I didn't have to know it this well. So uh, if you like this video, guys, I would appreciate it very much if you would hit that subscribe button. And that's a great uh, free way to uh, support us and to let us know that there are eyeballs watching, making it worth it to do some of these videos. And uh, obviously when you subscribe, click on that little bell icon so you get notified when we come out with new videos. And of course, thumbs up. Thumbs up will help Google suggest this video to other people looking for this stuff. So thanks very much, and we'll catch you on the next Airspeed Adventure. All right, I promised you a little bonus content here, so here it is. Oh, I'm gonna sit down. This companionway door goes to the master cabin forward. There it is, ta-da! See, I made my bed. It's just my little Joshua here. Say hey, bud. Just him uh, and me down here um, for this work trip here. And I made the bed. Underneath this floorboard here is a whole nother um, air conditioning uh, mess. It was even messier until I redid the whole thing. So I put in another one of those 500 gallon per hour Seaflow uh, pumps, magnetic drive pumps. And uh, those are all brand new fresh through hauls that you can see. Um, I used all um, Marillon Series 93 valves and uh, through hauls and Seacocks and very, very happy with them so far. Unfortunately, this is a split system up here as well. There is a uh, compressor underneath here and underneath here which you can't see right now oh now you can see it underneath here is the air handler but what's underneath here is what's really interesting and this is coming up in a future video and i'll give you a little quick snapshot there's a bunch of raymarine stuff axiom pro 16 that's the 16s the 16 RVX is on its way. It's back ordered. This is the um, this is the side scan sonar um, transducer here. This is the new AIS 700. This is all the cables and parts and pieces and adapters, and also the um, the network controller, the Ethernet controller, and it's all going in soon. And that, my friends, is what we can look forward to in future episodes of Airspeed Adventure. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a good day.